Hello all. 11 October 2012. Well, we better go right over to the news. The European Parliament's Industrial Committee has rejected a uh, moratorium on offshore drilling. Uh, they were heavily lobbied by the oil industry. Now, this all started when Obama lifted our ban on oil drilling in the Arctic. So now there's this race to plunder the Arctic as fast as everybody can. Um, not only did Obama start the oil rush, but all the other, like copper and gold, magnesium, all those type of things, including uh, uranium, are all in abundance up in the Arctic areas, and those are all going to be heavily exploited now. Thank you, Obama. I'm sure we'll think of that when we vote, right? We'll vote for somebody other than Obama or the uh, Romney. That only leaves pretty much one other person, huh? Uh, Jill Stein, even though she's for Obama and wants Obama to win over Romney. W what about Jill Stein winning? Just thought I'd ask. Okay, and let's go over to the U.S. state of Texas, where, unfortunately, there's some more bad news about the, the Keystone XL pipeline. Let me show you. Okay, the Tar Sands Blockade, which is a group of people trying to stop the clear-cutting in Texas, are on their third week of protesting. And believe it or not, we yes, we do have a street sweeper to deal with. I'll be right back. So apparently the police down there are taking their uniforms off and during the time that they're off duty coming in and harassing, severely harassing the protesters. Remember, it's illegal to protest in the U.S. now. It's considered a terrorist act. More street sweeping, hang on. The reason it's so important to, to stop these pipelines taking the tar sands anywhere is because of the severe pollution problems that's being caused by burning fossil fuel. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, this is representing Earth. Everybody's heard of the jet stream. Um, down here, down here in the equator, it's warm. And as you go up towards the poles, it gets colder. Okay, when climate change gets to a point where the temperature at the north end of the, of the planet is similar to the, to the equator, the jet stream acts differently than when it's really cold at the north and very warm in the central, in the uh, equatorial region. So what is the jet stream? The jet stream is the difference between the warm air and the cold air. It's a barrier. So wherever the jet stream goes down, it brings cold air from the north or from the south. When we get what's called a meandering jet stream, such as this, all the way around the planet, which is what we have now because the temperatures up north are not that cold compared to the temperatures in the middle equator. So the jet stream slows down and meanders. Sometimes it'll have a little e eddy kind of thing out here or something over here. Um, so warm air here, cold air here. Warm air here, cold air there. So if you happen to be in the States, okay, and, and it's Florida, right, and you're in the States and you're in one of these eddies, you get high temperatures. If the states are here, you get low temperatures. A lot of people don't understand that global climate change means meandering uh, jet streams. So while the EU can be in snow, the US can be in a heat wave. Now the normal situation with the jet stream before we started getting into severe climate change was much more like this. It was flatter and the ripples weren't as bad. But the severity of the cold from here to there was extreme, and the jet stream would really move up to 300 miles an hour in some cases. Okay, and with that, let's go look at seeing what the barges in San Francisco Bay, how many there are. We use this to judge what the supply of crude oil is and gasoline for northern, central, and southern California and parts of Oregon. It's not extremely accurate, but it's just another one of our little measurements. Foggy, cold, 54, very windy.
Well, I don't know what this means, but there are six barges today. Most of them are very low in the water. All right. With all this honking, let's go see what's happening with gasoline prices here in San Francisco at the expensive gas station and the inexpensive gas station. Okay, and here's the old inexpensive gas station, which has dropped their prices. So now they're back to being the inexpensive gas station here on this wet, drizzly day in San Francisco. And this is the expensive gas station. And what about Brent crude? Let's see what's happening with that. All right, Brent crude started about 114.5, and it did just a very little gentle waves as it went up to about 115.5, then it wiggled all the way down to 115, then it shot right up to almost 116, just about almost at the line, but fell back down to 115. Came back up, came back down, and guess what? It's at 115.5. Steadily climbing. All right, Stephen Chandler, the famous red mud painter. Doesn't go there. There, that's better. <laughs> okay. So, Stephen Chandler, the famous red mud painter from Georgia. He made a comment on Pink Barrio. He asked, well, he didn't ask. He just uh, said what, basically, what happened to the uh, three-cylinder Chevy Volt and some of the other high mileage vehicles, such as the one that we used to own when I was a younger, much younger and living at home, um, we had a, a Volkswagen Rabbit diesel that would get almost 55 miles to the gallon. What did happen to all those vehicles? Well, I, I sort of have a feeling the same thing happened to what happened to all the mass transportation that was uh, eliminated throughout the cities in the 40s. Um, you know, the oil industry doesn't want to see 60 miles to the gallon. They just don't like it. Thanks for your comment. Okay, let's don't forget the board on on the 31st of October coming up here. It'll be a separate video and it'll it'll just say board on. It will not say peak oil video. Until next time.